Here we go. This is a better example. X squared plus 2X minus 3. Now, right now, if I asked you to graph this, what would you do? The find the vertex. Absolutely. Find the vertex. And you're right, Shamik, that would be one of the points. But first, we need to find the, the vertex. And to do that, we use that little formula, right? Yeah. What's the little formula? Opposite of B over 2A. Okay. Opposite of B over 2A, which is negative 2 over 2, which is... And then what do I do with that? Plug it in. Plug it in. So negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 minus 3, which gives me what? Negative 4. So are we all in agreement that negative 1, ah, negative 4 is my vertex? Yes? Okay. Shamik, and then you said I'd do what? Find the y-intercept. Find the y-intercept. That's an easy point. So let's just say I'm here, I'm negative one, one, two, three, four, and this is just a rough estimate. And what's your y-intercept? Negative three. Negative three? Three. Then what? Do it, reflect it. Reflect it. Connect it, yes? And that's my parabola, do you agree? Why do you negative one? When I did opposite B over 2A. Did we ever do that? Yeah. Oh, Graphing and set. This is what you took the quiz on Friday. I know. I didn't know opposite B over 2A where you did the. Remember I gave you the step sheet where I had steps, example, run alongside it. And we did. We found the vertex. Then we found an easy point. Reflect and connect. Yeah, I remember that. But I don't remember Flip back to, not Friday, but probably Wednesday or Thursday's notes. Hold on, I'll pause. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about a different way to graph. Just like with our lines, remember whenever you were graphing lines, you graphed in slope-intercept form and point-slope and um, standard form, and you learned different methods for graphing in different forms of the equation. Do you all remember that? Okay, good. Tell me how maybe I could rewrite this another way. Taking what we've already learned, how could I change that, manipulate it around, make it look different? So about the purple thing? Yeah, with circle and purple. Factor it. Factor it. Okay. Let's factor it and see what happens. All right. X squared plus 2X minus 3. If I factor that, What are my signs going to look like? Yeah. Mixed. What two terms multiply to negative 3x squared but add to 2x? 3x and negative x. Good job. All right. Uh, what's the GCF? x. What's the GCF? Negative. Close. Negative, negative 1. Just because this one doesn't have an X on it. How about here? X. Here. Three. This is another one of those easies that it does not have a leading coefficient, so it was an easy factor. So do we all agree that the quadratic we just graphed has the exact same equation here? We've just manipulated it a little bit. You agree it's the same equation? Think about what we've been doing when we factor. Look what we did on the warm-ups up here. If I made this equal zero, what would I be finding? Absolutely, the x-intercepts. Great job. Do y'all see that connection? If we want to find x-intercepts, we plug zero in for y. If we want to find y-intercepts, we plug zero in for x, right? So if I plug a zero in for y, which is setting the equation equal to zero, and I solve for x, I'm finding the x-intercepts. Do y'all see that? So what are the x-intercepts of this graph? One and negative three. 
because either this piece equals zero and or this piece equals zero. So I get x equals one and x equals negative three. Is anybody confused so far? We really just did the same thing we've been doing. It just looks a little different because I'm talking about graphing in just a second. Think about this with me for just a minute. Now here's where you really got the thing. If I were asking you to graph this equation, but I gave it to you in this form, you've already told me you know the intercepts, right? That's two points. How many points do you need to graph a problem? Three. Three. One of them must be the what? The vertex. The vertex. So what are you missing? The vertex, right? And since these are intercepts, at 1 and 1, 2, 3, negative 3, what do you need to find? The middle. The absolutely, the middle, the axis of symmetry in between. Good job, guys. So now my next question is, how do you find the middle of two points? A average them. Absolutely average them. I don't have to worry about, no, when you were in geometry, you did like the midpoint formula? Right? But since this one, the um, y coordinate is going to be zero anyway, really all I need to do is find the average of the x's. Yes? So, actually, let me put axis of symmetry. I don't know why my pen keeps. All right, so you said average them together. So negative 3 plus 1 divided by 2 is what? Negative one. Negative one. Absolutely. So that's the x value of my vertex. Do we all see that? No. No. Okay. Do you agree? Do you see why this is the axis of symmetry? Yeah. That's exactly in the middle, right? And we know that the vertex lies on the axis of symmetry, right? So if it's somewhere on here, then I know that x must be negative one. Because it's got to be on this axis. I just need to know how far up or how far down it is. So now we're trying to find the y. So absolutely, now we try to find the y. So we plug back in my original equation to find the y. Do you see? We plug in negative 1. We plug in negative 1, yep. So y equals negative 1 minus 1. And negative 1 plus 3. Negative 2 times, what'd you say? 2. So what are the coordinates of the vertex? Wait, well, negative 4. 1. Oh, you're right. Thank you. Negative 1 and negative 4. Negative 1, negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 on the axis of symmetry. And this is a very rough sketch. I'm, I'm, I went a little further with this than what I was anticipating, but y'all were catching on so fast and doing so well that I decided to take it, take it through to the end. <clears throat> now, take a look back at your original equation. Remember, my leading coefficient is 1. It's positive, right? So it should open up and should be an average size, and it does, and it is. Yes? Does that make sense? Now I'm going to give you the steps for it. So are we just trying to go yeah. what we've Yes, it's kind of like when you learn to graph a line, you probably learned in slope-intercept form. And then after you learned how to graph in slope-intercept form, maybe somebody taught you standard form and you found the intercepts. Kind of the same thing. I taught you to graph in standard form first, now I'm showing you these other two forms. But I, I like for you to understand it's really windy outside today. I like for you to understand why, so if I can get you to come to it on your own before I tell you exactly how to do it, I find it helps you understand it a little better. All right, so y'all want me to give you a step sheet if you see this form? All right. So this is called, did y'all finish getting that? You need me to go back? Yeah, Okay. This is called intercept form. Can you guess why? It gives you the x-intercepts, absolutely. I'll do steps and an example as we go. The X.
we'll do a different one than what we've already done. These can get nasty sometimes when you're doing the vertex, especially if it doesn't, whenever you average them together, if you don't have an even number. Now do notice as y'all copy that down, when we found the intercepts, remember it's setting each piece to zero and solving. So your intercepts are going to take on the opposite, excuse me, sign of what's on the inside of the parentheses here. But you see why. Yes? How is that opposite sign? Well, because whenever you set it equal to zero and solve it, you would have to add five. Like if you said x minus 5 equals 0, you'd have to add 5 to both sides so you get x equals 5. So it changes the sign there that way for the intercepts. All right, first step, find the what? What do you think? What have we been talking about? The intercepts. Find and plot the x-intercepts. That is P and that is Q. And I will tell you, you notice the A that's in front there? It has the exact same properties that the A in standard form has. It tells us skinny, wide, up, or down. What is that part of intercept? X intercepts. Is it running off the screen a little bit? Hmm. Y'all got it? Yes. All right, so look at the graph, I mean the equation here on the right. Tell me where it crosses the x-axis. Negative one. And where else? Five. And we remember we talked about there's some different scenarios. Sometimes it crosses twice, sometimes once, and sometimes never. Okay. This one crosses twice. So negative one and five. Could it just set on equal to zero? Yes, and that's what they did. They just kind of did it in their head. So if you want to do x plus one equals zero and solve, and then x minus five equals zero and solve, you can. Same thing. That's really what you're doing because you're you're putting zero to y to find the x-intercepts and then setting the two multiplied pieces. All right, I'm going to click over to the next page to graph it so you, it's a nice graph. So if you've got some graph paper you're using, this will be a great time to get it out. I'm going to pause this video while I'll all right, what were my intercepts? Negative one and five. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, absolutely. That's what we're going to do next. So this is where, if you look at the points, remember any two points, because my parabola is symmetrical, okay, any two points here, the, the line that divides it in half or the line of symmetry there is also going to be my axis of symmetry. It's going to be the line on which the vertex sits. So Tanner said we need to average them, and he's absolutely right. So I'm going to say we need to find the axis of symmetry. P plus Q over 2. That's how we average two numbers, right? Exactly in the middle. And when you do this, it needs to be the actual numbers that you found, the actual intercepts where the sign's already been changed. It's already been solved for X. So, X is going to equal negative 1 plus 5 over 2. 
Negative 1 plus 5 is? 4. 4. Over 2 is? 2. So am I confused? All right, so that's just my axis of symmetry. So let me plot that on my graph here, x equals 2. Ooh. Absolutely. Good job. All right, x equals 2. There's my axis of symmetry. Somewhere on that pink dashed line lies my vertex. Juliana says, plug it back in so we can figure out where. And you're absolutely right. Plug in to find y. Don't forget that negative sign that sat on the outside of this equation. What is that going to do for my parabola? It's going to make it negative. It's going to flip it down. Yep, yeah, it's going to open down. It's going to be a sad parabola. Oh, we only do that if the problem negative. Only do that what? Well, it's just going to force it to go down. Is what it's going to do. You don't. It's not. Really, you just got to remember to carry it, <coughs> carry it through the problem if it's there in the beginning. All right, x, which is two plus one. What was the second part? Minus five. Two minus five. Two plus one is three. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> three. And then five, and then that's negative three. Negative three and negative three is. Wait, so then we just plug in the thing. Yeah, just plug in the original equation. Yes. Yep. Because the average is the axis of symmetry, which is also the x-coordinate of the vertex. All right. So what are the coordinates? Put them together. 2, 9. Cross our fingers. Let's hope it opens down when we plot this and that we've done it correctly. It is correct, I was just saying. It's just, a, it's just a second check for your work that you've done it right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ah, nine. It's going through my fingers. I opened it up. Did you put negative nine or positive nine? What'd you do, Shamik? It opened up? I was just playing. Oh, okay. <laughs> Tell you what, you got us good. <laughs> you know what I'm fixing to ask you? Do one by yourself. No, with this one still, I am going to get you to do one by yourself. But what am I going to ask you? What do you do now? The domain and the range. Oh, wow. What I tell you, it's never going to go away. What's the domain of that problem? That. Okay, domain is describes your x. Okay, left and right. So look from the left to the right. Is there ever a time when you wouldn't have a corresponding y value for some x? Yeah. Yeah. No. And we'll start doing this algebraically a little bit more later on. But for right now, let's look visually. What about the range? Range is the y. Negative infinity and nine. Good job. And nine. Yes. It would be from the vertex to infinity. Yes. So left to right, because no matter where you go on this x-axis, even if I were here, there's going to be a corresponding y value. It's going to be way, it's going to be, uh, because this is actually, and you can't tell it as much from the picture, but this is actually creeping out as you go down. Okay, so there's going to be, it may be a huge number or a really, really small number, but at some point, there's going to be an x that corresponds. I can always plug in negative 100 into my equation and get a value back out. Yes. Yeah. Is it always going to be that for domain? Right. For parabolas, yes. But we're going to get to some others that aren't, so you need to understand the concept of it. Yeah. So, 
Yeah. Yeah. Other questions about that? Can you go back to the drawing? Yeah. Daniel, did you finish this one? No, no, we'll wait. All right, let's do one more and give you a chance to try one, and then we'll talk about our last form. Ah, I sure don't want to. Okay. Graph this function and tell me the domain and range. First step. You got it? I bet you do. First step is to find the what? The x-intercepts. Do you recognize that it's intercept form? Yes. Okay. I always tell students a little trick because we have three forms. The first form is standard form. Everybody remember standard form. Second form is intercept form, and you see it has two sets of parentheses here. Two sets of parentheses means it's going to give us two points. The two points it's giving us are the x-intercepts. So x equals what is one intercept? Four. What's another intercept? Negative one. Are we all in agreement? Did we all at least get that far? Yeah. Four and negative one. All right, so let's plot those. Negative one. One, two, three, and four. If you got confused, I'm going to assume you got confused at this next point where we had to find the what? Vertex. vertex. And to find the vertex, we first found the axis of symmetry. Somebody's over there whispering it. You're right. <laughs> the axis of symmetry is found by doing what? Finding the average of the x-intercepts. So, uh-oh. You got a fraction. Is that okay? What? Did I do it wrong? Oh. Okay. Three over two, one and a half. If you look at the graph, it'll make sense. If I go N1, 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 N1 it's going to have to be right in between these two. At one and a half. So, did you do 1.5? <coughs> or did you just draw the axis on there in between the two points? Did you count them off? Yeah. Okay. I think I did it right. I was just getting really confused. Okay. Yeah. Wait, what were you with the two? I think I got it. What two? The two at the beginning. It was like two. And then... That's just my leading coefficient. That's my A. That's telling me that it's opening up, that it's a little bit skinnier than normal. That's the same A that it's always been. It's going to come into play whenever I plug back in my equation. Okay. So I'm going to plug my X back in. Y equals 2. I've got 3 over 2 minus 4. 3 over 2 plus 1. I like fractions, so I'm going to keep everything as a fraction. No. Yeah, if you did, it, I mean, it's not wrong. Three halves minus four. Four is the same thing as eight over two. Negative five halves. Yes? You don't do what? One is the same thing as two over two. Should I have done a fraction review in here like I did with my other class? Yes. Yes! I thought you were going to say, no, Miss McGee, we got this. <laughs> no, they're not. Fractions are our friend. All right, this is two over one. Do y'all know the little trick since we're multiplying and it's top and bottom? I can mark one of those out. Help me in my simplification. If not, then you got negative 50 over 4. <laughs> we'll just do it like that then. Yeah. Which reduces to negative 25 over 2, negative 12 and a half. Yes? So I go down negative 12 and a half. Uh oh, we're confused. Why are we confused? I see a confused look. Are you, did, did I confuse you on the fractions? Do what? 
On which one? For the whole answer? For the whole answer. Did you use your calculator? I can't even remember, If you used the calculator and you did a fraction, you got to put the fractions in parentheses, or else it'll spit you out the wrong answer. All right. So make sure. Are you sure? I'm not leaving. I, we leave no man behind in here. Okay, maybe I did, right? Maybe I did. What did you get? Did you plug three halves in or did you plug 1.5 in? 1.5. 1.5. So if you plugged it, let me do it as a, as a decimal over here just to show you. Oh, well, that's where you messed up. It's not a half, it's three halves. Shh, shut me. I, I know. All right, let's, um, guys, I need your attention. All right, so let's plot this negative 25 over 2. What you said, Same thing. 2 that. goes into 25 12 times. I know that, so negative 12 and a half. So I'm going to go to my graph and I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 11, 12. Golly, I'm just trying to be on the edge of my graph today. Oh. All right, and then connect the other side. There we go. All right, domain. What's my domain here? How about the range? Negative infinity, 12.5. Negative 12.5 infinity. Oh, my God. How? How? You have to start with the smallest. You go bottom up. So this is the lowest the graph ever gets, but then it goes up forever. When you go down, it's the opposite. Mm -hmm. All right. Ready for the next form? Next form. <coughs> next form or next question? Can we do like one more? Dang it, I'm going to need you to put your laptop all flat as a tablet so I can monitor what you're doing. All right. Next form, ready? This is the easiest form. I saved it for last. This one all the way to this form? Yes. I hope you noticed that it's easy for us to manipulate an equation from standard form to intercept form. All we have to do is factor it, right? We're going to be doing a lot of that. Vertex form. I haven't taught you how to manipulate to make it look like vertex form, but worry not. We will get there, my dear friends. Here's what it looks like. This is every student's favorite form to graph in because it's really easy. Now, it looks hard, but it's not, okay? My A still does the exact same thing it did every time before, which was what? What's A tell me? Up or down, skinny wide, what it looks like, right? It just kind of describes the shape. So this is still the same. Now. Because it's vertex form, what do you think I can take from the equation? The vertex, right? Your vertex is H, K. Now, if you have the vertex, you also have the what? Axis of symmetry, okay? So half the work is done for you already. This is very similar to standard form, but your first step is done because the vertex has already been found. You just don't have to calculate the vertex. You pull it straight from the equation. So, for example, if I had y equals negative 1 half x plus 1 squared, don't forget that little squared there, minus 3. Tell me what it's going to look like, first of all. Up or down? Down. Down, skinny or wide? wide, what's my vertex going to be? Absolutely. Good job. Does everybody see why it's negative 1 and not positive 1? 
The original equation was a minus sign. So it's x minus h. So in order to force this to be a minus sign, that's the original equation. So you have to force it to be my, so to do that, so if you want to think about opposite sign inside the parentheses and the same sign outside the parentheses, whatever helps you. The parentheses is the B. Hmm? The parentheses is the B. The H. Oh, and the K of the vertex, yeah. So let's graph one, start to finish. Y'all ready? Okay, tell me when you're caught up. All right. Ah, let me do it. Steps and an example. What was what? Um, on the last one we just did? Negative one, negative three. These are the only two form, I mean three forms we will graph quadratics in. And if I had to guess, this one's gonna be your favorite form. Oh man, I put that on the wrong side. Let's try this again. A times x minus h squared plus k. And I'm going to do negative a quarter x plus 2. Which one? No, we were just finding the um, vertex on that one. When you were in standard form, what was the first thing you did? Find the what? Vertex. We're going to do the exact same thing first. It's just easier. Say so find and plot. What's the vertex? Negative two, five. Good job. All right, well, we'll plot the vertex. What is it? Negative two, five. Negative two, five. Negative two, one, two, three, four. There's my vertex. I'm going to go ahead and draw my axis of symmetry because I know that's where it is, but it also helps me keep up with where my vertex is. All right. Think back to standard form again. Once we had the vertex, what did we do? Plug in something. Plug in something. Pick an easy point to use. One. One. All right. So you could plug in zero because the vertex is not at zero. Whatever you want to do. You want to do zero? I would, if, if there's a fraction in it, I would kind of look at the equation and think as I manipulate it, what would be easiest to use so I get a whole number back out. Four would work, but also zero would work because zero plus two is two and then squared is four. All right, so I'm going to pick, I'm going to say an easy point. If x is 0, that means y equals negative 1 fourth, 0 plus 2 squared plus 5. Am I going too fast? Kind of say, yeah, okay, I'll stop a minute. Same thing that we were doing with standard form. It just looks a little different now, but we're still just picking that easy point. You just write fast. That's it. I don't know oh, okay. You write so fast. Yeah. You think? I know. <laughs> All right. So let's do negative one fourth. Two squared is four. Negative a fourth times four is what? Negative one plus five is. So what's that point? Zero, four. One, two, three, four. 
Now what do you do? When you were in standard form, what did you do? Yeah. Reflect. It's our favorite step. We call it what? Reflect. Reflect and connect. It rhymes. Well, we're actually just picking up all the steps are the same. In standard form, it was find the vertex. And to do that, we had to do opposite B over 2A and plug back in, do all that work. Here, we, the vertex is in the equation. But then all the rest of the, the steps are exactly the same. Yeah, OK. Um, all right. Reflect it. Connected. What's the domain? Whoa. Negative infinity, infinity. What's whoa, Tanner? You sure? All right. What's the range? Negative infinity and five. Remember, smallest to biggest, so it's going down forever. So negative infinity and then up to uh, it stops right there. Five. Questions? Tell me how we feel about graphing quadratics in general. Oh, Give me a thumb. Bad? Give me a thumbs. This is great. This is so so. I don't have it at all. Everybody give me some thumb. Okay. Alright. Let's give me done. Okay. Let me. Oh, I forgot to pause.